Hey everyone, welcome to the Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And for today's Daily Word, we're in the Gospel of Mark chapter 10. And what I'd like to do is read for you verses 17 to 27, a portion of our scripture today. And then let's, let's think together just for a few minutes here about what it is in our lives that we might, being, we might be setting as off limits to God. So, if you would, hear the word of the Lord. As Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came running up to him, knelt down, and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. You must not cheat anyone. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, the man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. There is still one thing you haven't done, he told him. Go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this, the man's face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to the disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. This amazed them, but Jesus said again, dear children, it is very hard to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astounded. Then who in the world can be saved? They asked. Jesus looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible, but not with God. Everything is possible with God. Well, friends, the first thing that it seems to me we should note is that this man wants something that he does not have which means that he, he knows that he doesn't have the kind of relationship with God that gives him an assurance of eternal life. He believes that there is such a thing as true and eternal life. And, and he believes that somehow he could, well, earn it. He's doing uh, things now. He's obviously re- religiously interested, active. He's He's doing things, but, but he knows in his heart of hearts that it is simply just not enough. So he believes that he can earn eternal life by perhaps adding some religious practice that Jesus could advise him of. And, and we have to say, you know, uh, to his credit, he, he recognizes that Jesus has the words of eternal life. He recognizes that that Jesus knows the way to life. Now, what he does not yet recognize is that Jesus is not just someone who can tell him what the way of life, the way to life is, but that in fact, he is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He is the way himself to eternal life. Now, notice, if you will, that, that Jesus as he names commandments, that he names the commandments that are the, the latter commandments that have to do with people. So adultery, murder, lying, and, and so forth. And the man says, well, you know, I've done all of these. The, uh, the, one, uh, the ones, though, that, that Jesus doesn't mention, which I, I think is significant here, he, he does not name those that relate to God. So, if you will, take note, uh, this is from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. Listen now to those that, that Jesus does not include as he, as he begins answering this man's question. Then God gave the people all these instructions. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of 
any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord, your, I am the Lord your God. I am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children, and the entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. So these, notice then, that are the ones that Jesus does not, uh, does not name. The, the fact of the matter is this man is willing to be moral. By, by everything that we know, he, he was. Jesus doesn't argue with him. Uh, he, is, he is living a moral life. He is also willing to do religious things. He wouldn't have come to Jesus if he weren't willing to do something to earn the life that his heart desires. Uh, what he is unwilling to do, though, friends, is he is unwilling to give up his idol. That is a created thing that we make ultimate. Uh, he had many possessions, and these God was not allowed to touch. It was hands off with his possessions. What we find is that whatever we do not allow God to touch, whatever area we say to God, you can come this far, but no further. This, this is off limits to you. It will not come under your sovereignty. It will not come under your transforming grace. This is off limits. We just say, this is an area, God, I'm not going to submit to you. And when we do that, what we have to realize is that that area that we, we refuse to submit to, to God, in fact, is our true God, little g God. Uh, that is what we've made first and sovereign in our lives. Now, Jesus knows that this man's heart, that his love is for his wealth. It is his identity. It is his confidence. It is his goal. It is his trust. And by asking the man to give it all away, Jesus is asking him to tear down this idol in his heart so that he might love God. This is why Jesus named all of those other commandments first, because the implication is, yeah, okay, you, you're doing all that. Got it. No adultery, no stealing, lying. Got it. But now let's return to those first. Do you have an idol in your life? Have you set something apart from God as ultimate in your life? Have you told God that he's got to be hands off with this and therefore you've declared that this thing is your true God? Now, wealth, of course, is, is still a huge draw for our hearts, for the affection of our hearts. It is still an obstacle for faith uh, for many, but, but what we find is, of course, what Jesus says is true, that, that what is impossible with man is, in fact, possible with God. We find that God is still moving in people's lives. God is still touching the hearts of people with the truth of the gospel, confirming the truth of God's love, of the, the cross of what Jesus accomplished there for us, and, and people are still taking Jesus as Lord and Savior. Uh, this man, truth of the matter is, this man was not going to earn somehow his salvation by giving away his wealth. That wasn't going to earn him salvation. This man was going to be saved by trusting in Jesus. He was going to be saved by giving his life to Jesus as his Savior, and his Lord. What Jesus knows is that so long as, as his wealth was his love, his trust, his everything, that he would never give his heart to the Lord. And let's, let's add this too. Truthfully, 
wealth is not the only idol in people's lives, in, in our lives. Wealth is not the only thing that we human beings don't want to submit to God. Uh, today, what we find is that many, many are making an idol out of sexuality, telling God that they're going to live out uh, their desires no matter what, God, it's hands off from my sexuality. I will do what I want to do. And we find in addition to that, things like leisure and, and travel and, of course, the accumulation of things apart from, from just having money, having what money can buy. And, the, friends, there are all sorts of things that we lift up as idols in our lives and we say to God, listen, you know, everything else maybe, but not this, not this. You're not allowed to go there. And we build up a wall and we harden our hearts. And, and so, friends, we must, we must all be uh, about daily submission to Jesus Christ, submitting our lives, declaring that He is our true love day after day. Daily, I will take up my cross Daily, I will submit my will to yours. Daily, I will give up my own way so that I might have yours. Friends, when we gave our lives to Christ, we gave our lives to Christ. We belong to Him. We're no longer our own. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. And we might, might well become convinced that there is there is something that we must cling to in our lives, but the truth of the matter is, so long as we are clinging to something that is not Jesus, we are not experiencing the fullness of life that He has for us. Life is in Him, and as He said, if I could just paraphrase, you know, when we try to, we try to hold on to, to our lives, when we try to hold on to what we think is is the definition of life, is the necessity of life. When we try to hold on to that, what we find is that we actually lose. We lose our lives. We, we, we lose the, the blessing, the abundance. We, we lose the, the intimacy. We, we lose the, the, just the adventure of faith that God would have us on. And, and so we must always, friends, be guarding our hearts against any idolatry and inviting the Holy Spirit, search me, Lord, and know me. Show me, Lord, if we could connect Psalm 139 with this, show me wherever there's an idol in my life, wherever I'm, I'm resisting the, the touch of the Holy Spirit, the, the conviction, the transformation of the Spirit, show me, Lord, where it is. I will submit to you, for you, Lord, are my first love. May it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And friends, till we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.